everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pound, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. We out here, man. We rolling 33 years of prison stories. We get back into these stories for y'all, man. I appreciate everybody who been liking the videos. Everybody who been rocking with the little shorter videos. Everybody who leave a comment, man. Everybody who leave a like, man. I appreciate you. Much love. It just helps grow the channel. And that's what we're trying to do, grow. So we can get out here and reach more people. Every city, every state, every country, we want this positive message to be out there, man. So uh, y'all keep on supporting, man. It's very important. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> this story right here, man. This is this is, this is, uh. Story that just came back to my mind too, you know, and um, I think it's an interesting story. It was a crazy story. Um, I I want to talk about this story because it, it's it's combined. It's it's like me with somebody else. This was when um I had to beef with Big Raymond, man. I know y'all remember Big Raymond and the story I told y'all about Big Raymond. Um, and if y'all don't remember, go back and watch the story. I think it's called the first time I had to use Bethlehem. Big Raymond got out of pocket, man, and uh situation got out of hand and ended me up in uh, you know, in seg in the trick bag. But when that happened, um, they shut the compound down. You know, because like I say, Augusta was new. It wasn't that really it wasn't really um it hadn't really been up but a couple of years, I believe. And they hadn't seen nothing like that. They hadn't seen that type of uh, uh valid altercation before so they was looking at me like I was you know uh, 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 Charles Manson or somebody right <laughs> you know they was trying to crucify me but the compound got shut down and when things like that happen you know you have a lot of dudes on the compound and they hear about what happened or whatever they may be mad at you because you got the compound shut down you got them on lock they on lockdown you know they can't come out of nothing we had just came off a of lockdown when the Raymond situation happened so to put them right back on lockdown, they was just like super mad. So you had some dudes that was, you know, secretly hating on me, and uh, I ain't even know it, you know. But the whole thing was because they on lock, you know. And I know when you're in prison, they may say like, well, y'all locked down anyway. But there's a difference when you, you know, on the compound and you get to move around a little bit of freedom, you know, that you, if you want to call it that, the little bit of freedom that you do have, that you get to move around, get to use the phone, go to shower, do the things that you need to do take care of your daily activities than being behind that door. When you behind that door, you can't do nothing, man. You just stuck up in that cell and you might got an old Bama cell partner and, you know, it's just it's just real dreary. It's more dreary than it usually is when you behind that door. And some dudes can't take that. They can't take being behind that door, man. I'm telling you, you get dudes to be behind that door and they get to snapping and going off. And, you know, that's usually when cell fights end up happening. Because now you're forced to be in this little small space with, with your cell partner who you might really don't even rock with. You really don't even like him, you know. But now you stuck up in here with him. You listening to him talk foolishness and stuff you don't want to hear. He burping and farting and got to use the bathroom. And, I mean, snoring when he sleep. I mean, you just go through it when you're in there with, you know, with another person, you know, in that small quarters. So... The less amount of time that you have to spend in that small space with somebody else, it, 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 you know what I'm saying, it's, it's a little relief. So when you in that, you don't like to be in it. And then when you're on lockdown, like I say, you you ain't got no choice. It's 24-7, you know, that's where you at. He, you know, he right there, whatever you doing, he right there, whatever he doing, you right there. So it's just a situation that you don't really want to be in. And some dudes, when they get stuck in that situation right there, you know, that's when it bring out the, the anger and the frustration in them, uh, uh, make them really look at their situation, what they done put themselves in by being in prison. And, you, you know, you can't do nothing about it because that's just how it's going to be. But, yeah, so when the situation happened with me and Raymond, so the compound was on lock and they had just come off lock, so they go back on lock for about a week, maybe two weeks. I can't really remember, but I know they went back on lockdown because, like I say, it was a huge altercation. So, now... 
they come off a lot for that situation, right? You know, my situation with Big Raymond. So when they come off a lot, you know, they, you know, everybody, you know, happy. They moving around. They trying to, you know, get on the phone. Dudes get the beefing over the phone. Showers, microwaves, whatever the case may be. Because now everybody trying to, you know, catch back up from what they missed out on. People might have had calls going on. People might have been talking to their people on the street. Now they got to try to call them back. So now dudes beefing over the phone. Who going to get on the phone first? Who going to, you know. And back then on Augusta, that was the thing. Back then on Augusta was crazy because... Back then on Augusta, you could stay on the phone as long as you want to. You know what I'm saying? Where if ain't nobody would move you from off of that phone. But it wasn't like it is now. See, times have changed. So now when you use a the phone, they put the phone to run just like 15, 20 minutes and you have to call back. But back then, you could get on the phone if people was paying the phone bill, which they was just, man, they was savaging dudes with them phone bills. Them prison phone bills was something else, man. I'm telling you, they were, they was really getting out on you with them phones. So, you know, you could get on the phone then and just stay on the phone almost all day because it, it, it ain't had no limit as long as somebody was paying that bill. You see what I'm saying? But if you did get on there and stay on there a long time, the chances is somebody going to approach you about that phone because somebody going to want to get on that phone. And that's going to be a beef right there. I can't tell you how many fights I've seen over that phone. I can't tell you how many dudes I've seen get savaged and crushed over that phone. I mean, Bethlehem put up in them. Um, heads split open, everything over that phone because they won't get off the phone. And dudes want to get on the phone. And at this time, we had a limited amount of phones, too. I'm trying to remember way back on Augusta then. I think in that part, man, I think in that part, we might have just only had like two phones back then. And you're talking about 80-something people with just two phones. So, you know, it had to be some type of courtesy with using that phone. If it wasn't, it was definitely going to be a problem. And then you always got dudes who think, that, well, look, man, my, my situation more important than yours. I got to use the phone. You got dudes on there trying to keep their girl, you know, and you got dudes on there that got family stuff going on in their family, serious stuff. Somebody might have passed away. And, and don't nobody care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Only person care about your situation in there is you. Don't nobody care because they feel like their situation is more important than yours. Oh, it's my daughter's birthday. Oh, it's my it's my uh uh, uh grandma birthday. Or oh, yeah, was somebody getting married today? Or oh, my my son graduating. Today. It's all types of stuff. You had some dudes talking about yeah, I got to use phone, man. Somebody pass away. Somebody pass away in your family every week. You know what I'm saying? So dudes just to make up excuses to try to get on the phone. And then back then you got to realize too, man, if the, the weak people could barely use the phone at all. If you want, you know, strong enough to make sure, look, man, I'm next on that phone, then you probably won't use the phone back then. That's as simple as that. You had people that won't even use the phone because they ain't want to get on it because they ain't want that type of smoke. They ain't want that type of beef because it was going to be something behind that phone. That's a, that's a lot, you know, but I feel like the system set it up that way where you will have dudes at odds with each other because of these type of situations. You know, they set it up that way, you know what I'm saying? Because if not, they would have had more phones in there, more accessibility to the phones and everything. You know, like I say, years and decades later, they came up with putting more phones in the block first. Then they put phones out on the yard. So when you go out on the yard, you can use the phone. Because even back then, it wasn't no phones on the yard. So if you went outside for wreck, you couldn't use the phone, you know? So now they just try to make it more accessible where they had more phones in there. And then if you go outside, if you couldn't get the phone on the inside, you can go outside and try to use the phone. They just made more phones so it'll be less, you know, drama, less violence in there over the phone. But it still ain't help because, you know, like I said, you might have cut it down a couple of percentage. But all the way till the day I was leaving up out of the penitentiary, you still had dudes getting, you know, getting, getting that business over that phone, man. And now with these games coming in and stuff in the Virginia system, they... They trying to regulate phones. They trying to regulate showers. They trying to regulate microwaves. They trying to regulate the penitentiary. So it still comes back down to only the strong is going to survive because you're going to have to be willing to fight for yours and get what you want because if not, somebody's going to take it away from you. That's just the way it is. That's the nature of the environment that we in. Ain't nothing going to change that. I don't think anything going to change no matter what they implement because you got a bunch of dudes in a small environment and everybody is trying to get something out of nothing because we got nothing in there, zero. So whatever you can have, dudes want it, and they willing to take it, and that's just how it go. But uh, anyway, so when that situation came up, 
you know, after they come off a lot, everybody moving around, doing their own thing or whatever, whatever. So I was on one side, I think I was on the 400 side, and on the other side is the 300. On the 300 side, they had my dude over there, Frank Nitty, right? Frank had just moved over there from the other building. Frank had moved from uh, C building, I think it's C building down to where we was at. I think we was in M building. So Frank had moved down there, you know, with his homeboy, Daryl. Right, Daryl was a low key dude. He won't, you know, ain't make that much noise. I think Frank, you know, jive rock with him because I think either he knew him from the street or either they were somewhere and receiving or something like that together. Um, excuse me, I had to get that morning, that morning coffee in there, in the penitentiary, what we call that mud. Had to get that mud. It's early in the morning. I'm up trying to put this, put this stuff together for y'all, man. TBP salute. But anyway, yeah. So Frank had moved down there. You know, the move in the block with Daryl, right? Now, Frank Nitty, <laughs> Frank Nitty is a character within itself, man. You know, he got the name Frank Nitty, and trust me, he carried the name Frank Nitty is a wild one, man. Anybody who's in the Virginia penal system, there's a lot of Frank Nitties in there, but they know the one I'm talking about, old light skin Frank, old hyper Frank. I used to call him hyper Frank, man, because, man, the dude be so hyper. I mean, he just talking to you regular, and he just be so hyper. It's like he always amped up. And I'm going to tell you who he put you in the, in the frame of mind of to try to give y'all an example. Man, and I don't, and this might be a bad analogy, but I'm talking about in the way he talk, not the way he look. What I'm talking about is, is, is uh, Flavor Flav, man. You know how Flavor Flav, oh, yeah, boy. Uh, that's how Frank is all the time. Frank is always like, yo, what's up, Frank, man? Yeah, what? Yeah, and he just can't talk regularly. He just always hyped and like, yeah, you know, and, and he just, that's how he is. But Frank was in there. Frank get money, man. Frank get money. You know, he do his thing. He shake out. You know, he, he mess with the little, you know, the little drug trade or the store box or anything that gets money in there. Frank is on top of He's a grinder. He always going to try to get money. He's a hustler. Flat foot hustler. He going to go out there and get it. You know, play poker, gamble, do whatever. That's him. He always on the grind. You know, little, little dude, light-skinned dude, probably about, you know, my height, but, you know, smaller frame, probably like about 1, 145, 150, 160, somewhere. Oh, 160 might be straight. Oh, no, he started working out one time later on in the years where I seen him. He had a little bit more size on him. But he had a nice little cut on him, man, but he had a big heart. And he, you know, he ain't going for nothing. He ain't going to let you do nothing to him. And by any means necessary, he, he'll give you that work if you want that work, you know. And, uh... Like I said, he stayed hype, and Frank also was known for staying on the women, man. <laughs> Frank be at the women. I don't care if it's a, it's, a, it's a kitchen worker, it's a counselor, it's a CO. Frank gonna shoot his shot. You know what I'm saying? He gonna shoot his shot. He gonna try to get on. He gonna try to pull a woman. That's what he do. And over the years, he he pulled some, plenty of them, you know. So, um, like I said, he stayed hustling, though. He stayed on the grind. So when he moved down there... To, to M building and he move over there with Daryl, he goes in the block with Daryl, you know, and he automatically brings his store box down there. He had a store box. I told y'all what a store box is. The store box is more or less like a loan shop business, right? Store box is when you got a surplus of commissary, everything they got in there, you know, if you got chips, you got a lot of chips, you got candy bars, a lot of candy bars, sodas, you know, canned goods, uh, coffee, you know, tobacco, uh, cigarettes, everything that the store got, you got it. So, in essence, when people can't get to the store, because we only go to the store like once a week, certain compounds, once every two weeks. So, people run out, and they run out of stuff for whatever reason. They might be gambling, they run out of money. They might, you know, eat up all their food, don't know how to manage their money, they run out of before they can go back to the store. You know, they may owe somebody. They may buy something, purchase something from somebody. And, you know, in their commissary is currency, so that's money, you know. So dudes will run out before they had to go back to the store. Somebody might got a pair of tennis shoes that they want to sell, and they your size, and they want X amount of money for it, and you give them all your commissary, so now you ain't got nothing to eat till you go back to the store. You may say, I got it in commissary, but they may not want to wait, so you may just give them what you have or go buy something from the store box, man. But... When you go buy something from the store box, man, you got to understand that, that, that that's 100% interest. 
You know, you buy two, you owe four. You buy five, you owe ten. You buy ten, you owe twenty. So on and so forth. Now, if you run in the store box, you're going to have to be respected. You're going to have to be somebody that's already respected. Because if you don't, dude's going to come buy all your stuff and they ain't going to pay you back. And you ain't going to have nothing. And that's that. You let one dude don't pay you, ain't nobody going to pay you. So you might as well go ahead and shut the store box down because you're just giving away free food. So... With that being said, if somebody come buy your stuff, they got to know what the count is. Look, you come buy this, you know what I'm saying, I got to have it. This ain't no games, I ain't taking no excuses or no nothing. You buy this money, you got to pay this money. If you don't pay this money, then you already know what it is. The bar is already understood, you know what I'm saying? And as I told y'all, I ran a store box for decades with an iron fist. Yeah, I ran, I ran my store box with an iron fist, you know, meaning that... If you come get it and you don't pay me, then, you know, it's going to be some blood shed. That's as simple as that. It's going to be some blood shed. You can guarantee that. But at the same time, you got to realize the position that you're putting yourself in because if you have to do that, then the chances are you probably going to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? If you really put in some real work, it's gonna, you won't have to go to jail. So if you go to jail... Your store box and your business shut down anyway. And you're probably going to lose stuff because they're going to go through your property and all this and see you got all this surplus of food and everything. Then they're going to go check your commissary uh, 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 receipts and everything and see that you ain't paid for all this. So they're probably going to confiscate and give you a racketeering charge as well. But this goes with the game. You know, you got to understand the rules when you get in it. Also, you got to understand that, you know, like I say, you may build up a big old store box. You got all types of stuff. Whereas to somebody come borrow two bags of chips from you and two sodas, you know what I'm saying? So they owe you, you know, a four and four. And it ain't going to be no more than a couple of dollars, man. Probably under $10, you know. But at the same time, if they don't pay you and you got this big old store box with about four, three, four, five thousand dollars worth of uh, commissary in it, you're going to have to still crush this dude because if not then that right there going to be gone anyway because then once somebody find out Joe Blow ain't pay you, everybody else come, let me get this, let me get that, let me get this test store, let me get that, and you boom, 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 and you passing all this stuff out, and then ain't nobody planning on paying you anyway because they heard Joe Blow ain't paid. So now you got all these dudes to deal with when, when in, in, in the first point, you can deal with Joe Blow off the rip and let this be known. So the next time... Even if you get out of jail, when you get out of jail, they put you in a different place or put you whatever. It's just like penitentiary. It's like world news. Everything on trial. Look, if you go buy this from dude, man, you know, he just, you know, put the, put that work in on Joe Blow because Joe Blow ain't paying him that money down in such and such building. So don't go buying stuff from him because, you know, that's just how it's going to go. But you're going to have to end up putting some work in or you already have to have the reputation to hold that store box. You see what I'm saying? Because... They gonna try you, man. You got that dope fiend lasting in there. You got that straight lasting in there. You got these con artists lasting in there. You got these dudes that think they can out talk you in there. Oh no, man, I had it, but um, what happened was my money ain't come in in time, but I got it for you next week on the store because nah, I ain't I? I won't go for none of that. You know what I'm saying? I won't go for none of that. I let it be known off the rip. If you come get mine, you better already have a hundred percent. Guaranteed that you're going to be able to pay it back when you say you're going to pay it back. Because I ain't trying to listen to no excuses. I don't believe nothing. I don't care what you tell me happened. The money ain't. I don't care. Go buy it from another store. Bring it back and pay me. That's the way I look at it. I want my payment on payday the day that you're supposed to pay it to me. And that's all I was accepting. Or either, you know, you, you know what the business is. That's the, that's the only way you can really have a successful store. You know, so... With that being said, Frank ran the store down in the other building. So now he bringing his store all the way down here. Now, like I say, he already known that he, he, he going to put some work in if you try to play with his money. That's a known fact. So, but when the, the problem came in was when he got down there with Daryl, he want to bring his store box there. So now you bringing your store box into a block that already probably got store box. So now you creating competition, Right. You creating competition because if everybody go and buy from this store box or certain store boxes in there, then you bringing the store box down there and then you got a whole lot of stuff as well. So now people might feel like, oh, I'm tired of dealing with him, so I'm going to go deal with him now. This is the new store box in here. Plus, you might have people that may feel like, oh, well, 
I done burnt my bridges with these store boxes and you know what I'm saying? So now this is a new one. Let me go to him. So he automatically going to get some new traffic because he's just coming in there. But like I said, you, you done created competition now. And the way certain dudes may look at it is you trying to take money out of their pocket. You coming up in here with a store box. You just got up in the block. You know, you know what I'm saying? You coming in here just, just interrupting what I got going on. So that right there can create a beef in itself. That can create, can create tension. And all of that, you know, dislike, people that disliking you, you don't know why. You just trying to survive in prison yourself. And the store box might be, you know what I'm saying, that's your hustle. That might be what your hustle is. But now, like I say, dudes is looking at it like you invading their hustle. It's just like on the block, on the street, I would assume that if somebody's selling drugs on this corner, and then you come down on this corner and trying to sell drugs as well, they trying to remove you down. Nah, you in the way. <laughs> they don't want you around them because you cutting into their profits. So when Frank came down there and opened up the little store box down there, this is what happened. This is what dudes felt like, hey, hold on, bro. Hold on. We already got a store box in here. You know? Now, they had this dude in there named Bump, right? And Bump, Bump was a big old dude, man. He was swole. He, he was a big dude. He worked out. You know, he had a little reputation, you know, and he had a lot of little dudes around him that, you know, looked up to him and rocked with him, you know, his little home team or whatnot. And like I say, he stayed on the way, pal. He was, he was a big old dude, man. And, you know, he had a store box in there. So, to my understanding, Bump got upset because Frank come in there with the store box. Now, he know Frank. But I don't think they was really associates like that, but they just knew each other because, like I say, on the compound, if you got a little name for yourself, for whatever reason, people going to know who you is or know what you about. You know what I'm saying? So, to my understanding, Bump ain't like it because he had the biggest store box in the block. So, Bump had a problem with it. You see what I'm saying? He pulls up on Frank and asks Frank, you know what I'm saying, about the store box. So, Frank tell him... You know, because Frank being Frank, Frank, like, I'm saying, um, I mean, I mean, like, what, what, I mean, you know, like, what's up? This, this, this is my junk. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, you know, I run a store box. Wherever I go, I run a store box. Everybody know I run a store box. You know what I'm saying? So Bump, more or less, is like, okay, I understand you run a store box, but you coming up in here, we already got a store box, man. You coming up here, you, you know what I'm saying? You bringing that stuff up in here, bro. You don't even know what's going on. You ain't even asked nobody. You know what I'm saying? You got a store box here. And Frank, like, who, who I got to ask, bro? You, I mean, who I got to ask? I mean, I'm in penitentiary just like you. Who I got to ask? I paid for all of this. It's my stuff. You know what I'm saying? So the conversation went a little bit like that. So Bump was getting a little, little mad about the situation. So the situation got out of hand. So they just cut it off. Or Frank was more or less like, man, this is mine. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing me. You know what I'm saying? You do you. I ain't got nothing to do with your store box. I don't, you know, ain't nobody got to come get nothing for me. I'm just letting it be known I got a store box. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody got to come to me. If they want to go to you and they been in here going to you, they going to still keep going to you. It ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? So Bump was like, yeah, okay. All right. That's what's, that's what's up. That's what it is. But at the same time, Bump really won't feel in the situation. <laughs> he won't feel in the situation at all. So this is another thing when you're in penitentiary too, when it comes down to that peer pressure and you come down to people getting in your ear. So Bump go back and holler his dudes or whatever, whatever, and then you got all of these dudes getting in his ear like, man, you know, you know, F him, man, you know what I'm saying? He don't come in here running nothing, who, you know, why, why, why? So this creating a whole, you know, different scenario now. So now Frank, he, he, he ain't got nobody in there that he really, really rock with but Daryl. And then like I told you, Daryl is more or less like a... <laughs> He a meek dude, but at the same time, them alliances in prison, man. Whoever you align yourself with, that's what you got to be. That's what you're going to have to be. That's what you're going to have to rock with. Because if you align yourself with somebody in prison and they about that drama and you ain't about that drama, guess what? Now you about that drama. Because if something pop off and you don't show up and show out, now you got, you know what I'm saying, you got beef with, with, with the dude that you supposed to be cool with. Because he gonna, he gonna wanna see you about that situation. And I done seen it happen a many, many times. Also, people are gonna look at you as if that's who you rock with. If that's who you rock with, then that's what it is. You see what I'm saying? And Daryl was supposed to be his man. That's why he moved in there. They cool like that. That's his homie or whatever. And that's who he rock with. Daryl was younger than him. So he, you know, he really looking up to Frank. But I always looked at Daryl like he was a quiet dude. He was always a quiet dude to me. He ain't really say too much. He was like a jokester. When he did say something, he joking and, 
and trying to make fun or whatever. But mind you, we on the gusser. When I'm on the gusser, you talking about within the first five years of my business. So I'm still young too. I'm still in my early 20s. So these dudes is the same age, you know what I'm saying? Early 20s, you know? <laughs> yeah, early 20s, we in penitentiary. Getting ready to do <laughs> an astronomical amount of time, decades and stuff. You know, yeah, that's a lesson, young fellas out there. This is what happened to you. You won't be removed from this good life out here of freedom and put in these type of situations in this type of environment, which is pure, you know, chaotic and crazy. So anyway, so they done created this whole dynamic now where, you know, they got a problem with each other. But it's ironic because, like I say, are we on the street, man? You know, you open up a business and, and somebody else got a business and it's competition, it's competition, but it ain't, it, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's the way of the world. In prison, like I said, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different dynamic. Now you got beef. You got real beef. Dudes is like, nah, bro, you can't, you know what I'm saying? I, don't, I ain't rocking with that. So a couple of days go on and uh, Frank is, uh, you know, has, has said something about it to somebody. You know, like, yeah, dude, pull up on me, bought a store box, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't run my own store box in, in this block. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Who you think I am? You know what I'm saying? By him saying that to somebody out on the yard, like I told you, word and print attention, man, travels faster than <laughs> faster than a cell phone, man. I'm telling you, it just spreads. So somebody go back to Bump and say something to Bump about it, and Bump find out that, you know, uh, you, you going out there telling people I done pulled up on you about a store box, and I mean, I mean, what, what type of stuff you into? You know what I'm saying? I've been as I've been. I pulled up on you like a man. And we had a conversation about it. So, I mean, what you going talking about it about? You know what I'm saying? Who, who you trying to impress? So, Frank, like, boom, I ain't trying to impress nobody. You no, know, who said that I said something to him about it? Woo woo. It's all this he say, she say stuff going on now. So, Bump turn around and get gangster on him. So, Bump tell him straight up, say, look, well, uh, you ain't running no store box in here, bro. Yeah, you got to shut that down then. You know what I'm saying? You you take that to another block or take it back where you came from. But um, I got the store box in here, bro. So you you, you ain't running them. So Frank like, I ain't running one. Man, you trip. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm saying, who stop? Who, 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 who he said, I'm telling you, you ain't running one. So Frank like, yeah, all right. Well, I'm running. You know what I'm saying? I got a store box. This is my stuff. I'm running it, bro. I don't know who you think I am, bro. I'm running the store box. You know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't get in my business. Mind your business. I'm going to mind my business. Boom, boom, boom. So that's how the situation go. <laughs> they peel off from each other, go back to their, you know, neutral corners or whatever. And uh, <laughs> when they came out from lock, I guess Bump had talked to his dudes and they run down on Frank. You know what I'm saying? When the doors pop, pop back open, they run down on Frank to the best of my understanding. They run down on Frank about 3D. You know what I'm saying? Run up in the cell on him. Bang, bang, bang. Beat him up. You know what I'm saying? You know, jump on him. This 3 to 1. Frank, Frank try to rumble back. You know what I'm saying? But they bang him out. You know what I'm saying? Bust his little lip, you know what I'm saying? Swole his little eye, got a little black eye or whatever. So, you know, they leave up out the joint and tell him, look, you, you got to take the store box out here. Plus, you got to get up out here. You know what I'm saying? So, like I say, this was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. Frank don't, Frank like in all. Oh, he like, man, what, you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, all right, that's what it is. That's what it is. You, you, you know, y'all you, got that. You got it. You got it. So, boom, when they leave up out, then Daryl come down there and ask what's going on because Daryl was supposed to be in the cell at the time. You know what I'm saying? He sleep. He's sleeping. You know what I'm saying? While they creeping, he's sleeping. You know? So, he see how Frank is all banged up and bust up and everything. So, he like, what's up? What's up? What's happening? So, Frank tell him. You know what the play was. Look, man, they ran down here on me. You know, something's like, who? It's Bump. I can't think of the other two dudes' name. I know their faces and stuff, too. And I know one of them name because he ended up on the compound with me again. But I can't think of his name. But it's still, it, it's not really relevant to the uh, situation anyway. But anyway, they they go ahead on and talk about the situation. So, Daryl basically saying, I mean, so what's up? So, Frank tell him, oh, you know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. I'm going to take care. I'm going to take care. He said, you, you with me? You with me? So Daryl now, like I say, he on the spot. Even though he a meek dude now, this this your road dog. You know what I'm saying? This the only dude in the block that, that, that he really mess with is you. And he came down here to be up down here with you because you his partner. So you ain't got no choice. You stuck. You in something now whether you want to be in it or not. This is just how the game go. And this stuff getting ready to get super serious and deadly. So now you you got to be a part of. So, you know, Daryl was like, man, you know what I mean? Boom. They say Daryl, to my understanding, because I talked to Frank and Daryl, you know, after the situation was over. I explained that as I move along. But 
Daryl was more so like, man, now look, don't even worry about it, you know what I'm saying? But Frank like, no, nah, you crazy. Don't worry about it, you tripping. You know what I'm saying? Nah, yeah, I'm going to take care of this. So, is you with me or you not? So Daryl tell him, yeah, he would him. So boom, man, count clear, everybody out, go out to the yard, whatever, whatever. They go out there, man, you know, like I told you, Frank came from another building. So Frank done went down to that other building, <laughs> Holler at this people's man, told him what's happening. You know, he embarrassed, man, because you known on that compound or you known on any compound and people know you. So when they see you and you got some bruises or something on you, usually you don't see nobody walking around with bruises but some dudes that done got savage or somebody done took cold advantage of them or whatever, whatever, and they still walking around like that or they stay in their cell. You know what I'm saying? They on bed rest because they don't want nobody to see them. They got bruises or whatnot. Then when you see somebody like Frank, they got some bruises and stuff on them. And man, you talking about words spread fast? Now it's really spread fast about what happened to him. You know what I'm saying? So Franklin went down to his building, hollered at his people, <laughs> copped that Bethlehem, and he set out to do some work. So he come back, right, and go in his, go on in his block, go on in for count. You know what I'm saying? They locked down or whatever. And boom, <laughs> Frank ready for woe. He done hollered at Daryl. They done got some type of understanding and they know what's going on. And then the next thing you know, shh, man, they bust them doors open. And when they bust them doors open, Frank and Daryl went to work. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.